Hi folks, my name is Joe Patterson. Thanks for stopping by my YouTube channel. It's early in the morning and thought I'd come out and visit with you some. Got some coffee. You're welcome to get a cup of coffee and we can just visit together. Sometimes that's enjoyable in the morning time. Let's talk about things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Thank you, Lord, for this glorious day already. I just know it's going to be a wonderful day. Um, you know, I, uh, for years, I, I was talking to someone on the phone the other day, and I was thinking about all the years that, you know, I had to really kind of walk alone, um, not because I wanted to, um, I had such a powerful experience with the Lord, as many have, and I'm so thankful for that. Many of you uh, have had a powerful experience with the Lord. <clears throat> and it's because, first of all, that He chose us. <laughs> and so, um, as we try to experience God and for those precious moments that are so supernatural, um, they're just beyond words almost for our uh, fleshly bodies can't even fathom what's happened to our our soul and our spirit when God connects with us and offers that that drawing close when that happened um it hadn't happened to a lot of people so and especially in a little town that I'm from and I was so excited and so very zealous uh and I was immature trying to share and testify what had happened to me with many tears and great zeal and people would put up with it for a little bit because they're being uh, courteous and uh, after a while they, they, they just they couldn't hear it. It just was not the same to them as it was to me. It was, it was a powerful, powerful thing that, that I could hardly speak about without great emotion befalling me. <laughs> and they would, you know, kind of listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you could tell that just it just did not register. And so I began to realize that if I would have won the lottery, you know, uh, that would have been news that, that would have impacted them. It would have, oh my gosh, and would have wanted to tell their family, oh, come here, this guy won the lottery, you know, he won he won $10 million, and oh my gosh, you know, and they'd want to hear the story about where you went and, and bought the ticket, and what was it like whenever you knew and found out, and oh my gosh, and, and so, you know, you've been on TV now because you want to, I mean, it's just a big deal, people would, oh, it's such a big deal, and so that's, <laughs> that's sadly, that's the, that's the way it is. <clears throat> People are so caught up in the flesh. When you speak to them of the spirit, they just they cannot understand what you're talking about. They put up with it because of uh, courtesy, you know. And but after a while, the courtesy runs out, and they don't want to hear about it anymore. So I had to walk alone for a long time because uh, because I just it, what happened to me changed my life, and I didn't have anybody that could hear it. And so all alone, I walked for some time with the Lord. Now, I wasn't alone, and God was with me, but like everyone else, you know, you long to have people that you know, live down here on the earth and you're still in your fleshly body and you long to have somebody you could hug and talk to about it and, and share with that same zeal that they wouldn't feel like you were, you were kind of way out there. Anyway, all of that to say, led me over time, God led me to beautiful places and I never was able, I'll just say this real quick, I never was able to find, still not, able to find a church, a box church, a God store is what I call them, but uh, the churches, the denominations, you know, I never was able to find one that could uh, tolerate it, that could uh, not only tolerate it, but accept it and receive it. The churches of today, they, they want credentialed people to speak credentialed people to teach uh, like a like a store or a place where you would go to work you know they want somebody that's managing the store has to be credentialed and in God's holy precious church God calls people into offices and gives them gifts to do the work 
and he doesn't send them to seminaries and colleges and and those kinds of things. Uh, but yet he picks the despised and the lowly, the weak, those that look like they're nothing. And God chose them to glorify and to, that would glorify himself in. And the despised, again, people that are, that are lowly, that aren't, that aren't high intellectuals and, and smart ac academically. Anyway, all of that to say, uh, there weren't any places to go to share and talk and visit with people about and testify of the glory of God. People that could share in the excitement. The excitement that God is dealing with us and giving us giving us great uh, opportunities together to share, to love each other. So I'm asking you, I brought a few questions out, and that's the whole point of this video. This is kind of a slow pace, isn't it? I like a slow pace. You're going to learn that with God, that God is a, a slow-cooked meal. He's not fast food. Slow-cooked meal. The best. The best that anyone could ever make is slow-cooked meal. So the question is this. Those of you that are trying to find whatever you're trying to find, that's what the point of this video is. I don't know what you're looking for. What are you looking for? You get on YouTube, you search here and there and far and wide, you know. I used to do it. Get on YouTube and look at this one and that one and this one prophesied that and that one prophesied this and this one has some understanding here on this and that one has that and, you know, uh, always many of them are, you know, predictions of what's happening right now and here's what God's doing this year, this month and here he's coming again, you know, and the rapture's going to happen soon and all these headlines so to speak to try to get you to look at a youtube channel but i don't know what you're looking for and i will just share with you what i was looking for what i was looking for i didn't find on youtube um i was looking for people that could believe what god taught and said and put it into practice people that were accessible and what I found on YouTube was not that. Uh, I found that people that were on YouTube, I could not, especially if they had very many subscribers where they had, you know, maybe what you might call some fame. Um, uh, absolutely no accessibility at all. Try to reach out to them, and uh, it was just crickets, nothing. Nobody nobody get back with you. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I tried. I tried their email. I uh, tried you know, the contact information, and, and they just didn't want to get back with you. It's like, it, who knows, I guess you're, you're not a big enough person, I don't know. So uh, that was very disappointing, because some of their messages I really, really enjoyed, brought tears many times, and uh, really felt a connection, uh, YouTube-wise, and uh, realized that most people on YouTube don't want uh, true relationships. They want... Uh, uh, virtual reality they, they want a, a relationship on social media but they don't want to communicate other than email or something like that and I always send people to my email because I don't put my personal comfort, uh, contact information on uh, public display I don't put my phone number there and uh, I don't you know let people know that kind of stuff so I always send them to my email kind of get to know you a little bit that way and then I'm glad and eager to share uh, my phone number where we can communicate that way as well but again, I'm not looking for people that are uh, what I would. They're struggling uh, understanding balance. Uh, there are people. Uh, if you give them your phone number, might call you ten times a day. Uh, that can't happen. Uh, there has to be balance. And if you're immature and going through, and a lot of people, I know I was immature. Uh, you know, one time in my life with the Lord, and and it, and had so many questions, and just could have wore somebody out you know but i still try to be respectful of their time and so i would ask them please pick a time you pick the time and pick a time uh where we can have some time you know not five or ten minutes i need some time and i had questions and i had things to, to understand it wasn't just sit around and chat and you know i'm married and uh i have a, a life to maintain here and so I would ask anyone who contacts me to be respectful of that 
and try to understand that that's how it is for all everyone and not be given to evil spirits who would just uh, tempt you to become someone who is you know hindering other people uh, with your with what could be a lack of respect <laughs> anyway I don't know what you want, but that's what I, I wanted to find the people that really believed God and that really uh, wanted to do what the Lord says. Now, many of you people hearing this, I don't even know how many will end up listening to this video, but you may say, well, we have a church just like that. And yeah, I, I, I know, and, and, and maybe, but I'm not, I would, I made a video called Finding the Right Church. I would encourage you to watch that. And if you have a church, that gets through those 10 questions, then I would appreciate you commenting, and I'd love to visit that church as well. But everyone has a church that claims to love God and know God. Let me tell you something. There's a thing called false teaching. There's a thing called false teachers. The scripture says that many of them have gone out into the land. Many. So, there are many churches, there are many false teachers, and many false doctrines. So, what I'm looking for is a people that will abide in the doctrine of Christ. Now, you can read about that in 1 John chapter 2. I think, or, I'm sorry, yeah, I, I think it may be 2 John. It could be 2 John. And there's only one chapter, I believe, in Second John, around verse 9, 10, 11, 12. Might check that out. So I don't know what you're looking for. You know, are you looking... Because some of you may come across my channel. It's the whole point of making this video. You come across my channel, and you listen to certain things, and, and many of you uh, leave some very encouraging comments. And then you're gone. Just gone. I don't know where you go. You go on to the next YouTube guy, over to the next, and then over here and over there. And you just bounce, 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 which is what a great thing YouTube is, right? It, it lets somebody church hop. You can hop 30 different churches in, in two hours or three hours and never put a dime in the gas tank worth of gas. You never have to go anywhere. You have to get out. Just, just hop, 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 hop. But what are you gaining? See, what are you looking for? What kind of fellowship are you looking for? Our fellowship is small. We meet in each other's homes. For the sake of Christ, we don't go to the big God stores and stuff because we need personal. We need to be able to ask questions and get answers to those questions. You won't get that at the big churches. I know. I've never been able to get it. There's so many things that's going to come up over time <laughs> that you need to be able to disciple and be discipled. Anyway, so what do you want? I don't know what you're what you're looking for. I know I'm not, I don't bounce around anymore. I'm not bouncing around looking on YouTube everywhere and this guy and that guy and this guy. Most of them all embarrassingly should have, shamefully, Prophes those prophets that prophesied that Donald Trump would win the last time, the last election, they should surrender and, and, and confess that they were false prophets. They didn't hear from God. And yet, some of them still have YouTube channels and people still listening to them. Like, really? So I don't know what you want. I wanted a true fellowship, true, true brethren. Brethren. And I, I knew and I told the Lord with all my heart, I said, you know, I'd rather have one brother than a thousand, but one brother with a pure heart that loves you, Lord, rather than a thousand people who confess. So that's, we have very, very few in our fellowship, very small number. What are you looking for? I don't know what you're looking for. Are you looking for uh, uh, prophecies? Are you looking for miracles? You know, signs and wonders? Are you looking for, for the, that kind of thing? You know, what are you looking for? Uh, uh, somebody who can, you know, revelations? I, I don't know what, you're, what you are looking for in a, in, a, in a fellowship. Are you looking for knowledge? You know, are you looking for, for love? You know, are you looking for maturity? Are you looking for people of like faith? You know, what are you looking for? These are questions that you should you should answer, you know, be able to answer. 
yourself in, in the Lord. So the real thing is, is, you know, what does God want? And I will share with you what God wants is that God wants people that claim to love him and know him, first of all, to hear his commandments and obey them. One of the greatest commandments and probably the greatest commandment that Jesus left for us was to love each other just as he loved us. What a what a command. How are you going to do that? You're on YouTube. You don't know me. I don't know you. You tap in for a few comments. You sounded great. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Tried to reach out to some of you guys and, and there's just nothing. Nothing. And it's like I always say, the more I try to reach out and the more accessible I am, the less people seem like they want to visit, you want to talk, or want to connect. I don't want to just talk. I want to connect, have some fellowship, face-to-face. -face. I'm, Of course, I'm not talking goofy here. So it's what you read in the Word. When it says they long to see each other, to greet each other, you know, and, and long to see one another face-to-face, -to, -face, to get to know each other. Aren't we supposed to love each other? How can you love someone deeply on YouTube? It's like a virtual relationship. You don't really have a relationship on YouTube. You listen to a few things. They're powerful to you, maybe, and it, it wows you a little bit. I don't know whoever it might be. But in the, in the end, you don't have any relationship. They don't know you. You don't know them. It's a perfect back row Baptist relationship. I just slide into church, and I slide out when I want, and nobody knows. I like it that way. But that's not what God wants. You're not your own. If you claim to belong to God, you're not your own. He is your master, your king. Your Lord. How can you walk around not pleasing Him? Thinking you're serving Him. Do you know it pleases Him when brethren come together in unity? Did you know it pleases Him when we love each other deeply just as He loved us? Did you not know that's what pleases Him? If you don't obey the commandments of God yet claim to know Him, God says you're a liar. So what does God want? What pleases him? What's he looking for? What's the word say? His eyes are always searching. But for what? For those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. If you can't obey God and understand it, you should be plugged in to a fellowship. There should be a submission to authority. There should be counsel with wise men, brethren, men of understanding. There should be a sharpening going on of one another. You can't sharpen with, with a comment. You, it, it, maybe for a moment it's a great encouragement, but it quickly fades away when there's nothing attached to the other end of it. It's just like a comment in the wind. It just kind of lands on a branch. And what's attached to it? Where's the person that said it? I don't know. They don't want to come. They're afraid. They don't want to comment or uh, connect. They don't want to get, get to know me or me to know them. And so when you try to reach out, they're just like gone. It's like ghosts. Those kind of thought, those kind of things are worthless. They have no value. We're talking about pleasing God here. <laughs> talking about honoring our Lord and Savior. Talk about what he wants. What makes God happy? What pleases God? What gives him joy? What gives him, what glorifies him? When we come together, we're challenged to get to know one another. Your weaknesses, my weaknesses. When we come together, we find out, you know, can, can we maintain, can we, can we live among one another? Even if you live some states away, we can still visit. We go, sadly, here's what happens. People will go visit the Grand Canyon. They'll go visit the Rocky Mountains. They'll go visit Yellowstone. <laughs> They'll go out of the country and go visit Mexico and China and, 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 and Italy. And, and what a great pursuit of what? Memories? 
Something you can take a picture of and go home and put it in a book and be able to fan through the pages. Yeah, I've been there, I've been there, I've been there. So God says, you'll go visit them, but you won't go visit my people. You won't go connect face to face with brethren and sisters, but you'll do all these other things, spend your money on it, plan it, get excited about it. And, and all God can see what you reverence. He can see what you call important. Did you know it's idolatry? When you'll do it for that, but you won't do it for God, you won't do it because it pleases Him. It pleases Him when we come together in unity. Unity in the faith. Unity in Christ. So you just keep surfing. Surfing the, the internet, looking constantly on YouTube. looking. And I say, I made a video once called, you know, if maybe God sent you to my channel. Why did God send you to my channel? What if God sent you to my channel? What if for a reason? Sin. What if you have to know that, right? I don't know it. You know it. You're the one that has to know it. But if you know it, if you confess it, I've had people say it before, you know, look, oh, God sent me to your channel, you know. But what, where are you? Are you? Did, did he send you to someone else's channel now? Because you saw one of all the guys a little bit better. He spoke a little bit better, and he's prophetic. He likes to prophesy and tell you what's going to happen and all that kind of stuff. You know, and I don't, I don't, I don't get into all the talk about rapture and all that stuff. I always tell people, listen, here's what the Lord says by the Holy Spirit. We are supposed to be referred to as the five wise virgins, the ones who kept their lamps full. So they were always ready, night and day, for the coming of the bridegroom. So what is the point in getting all this talk about rapture and oh the Lord's going to come again? And they've been saying it since since Christ died and was rose to life. They've been saying it since then. So there might be some understanding there that you're not understanding, and maybe we are called to just live godly and holy lives because none of us know when we'll die. Maybe Christ comes back soon, right? But you may die tomorrow. You won't see it. So we live to please God. No longer having to be children who who are like thieves, having somebody a watchman post the door and tell me when somebody's coming. We are supposed to be living godly and holy lives, always looking for the coming of our Lord, always watching for the coming of our Lord. Not just watching with our eyes or ears pinned to the news, but with our lives attentive to God and regarding what He wants and what pleases Him. So, I can't, you know what you're the one that looks for. I don't know what you're looking for. But I know this, you're on this channel and in this fellowship, we're always looking for people who would love to gather face to face. And like I said, if people live far away, you know, I guarantee you, this is what I have never had. Never, not one time, not none. Anyone that ever says, you know, we've got a fellowship, we'd love to have you visit sometime, brother. Just let me know. We would love to come and have, have you visit, you know. And, and I've never had it happen. So I'm just saying, we do have a fellowship, and we would love for people to visit and plug into our fellowship and connect. But again, don't you have to decide what you, I don't know what you're looking for. So some, I think sometimes people just get in a pattern of shopping where you really never, never really buy anything. You just like shopping, you're window shopping, tire kicking, so to speak, constantly looking and just something, just scrolling. Keep on scrolling. You just keep on going. And God's been trying to get you to stop and stop somewhere where he wants you to sharpen and sharp, help sharpen others and be sharpened. He wants you to be encouraged. He wants you to be discipled. He wants you to be under some leadership that God has put in leadership. To have understanding that we all, God equips the saints. He equips the children with the teachers and the preachers and the pastors and all that, which you will find in any fellowship, there is always going to be a leader. There's going to be some kind of overseer, a man of understanding. You're going to have women that can that can prophesy and can speak from their heart out of purity, that share. You're going to have a sharing environment where the body is at work. It isn't just one person that always does it. Others can speak. Others can talk. They can prophesy. 
So those kind of things, I don't, I, again, that's why I say I don't know what people think they're looking for. But all I do know is this. Any fellowship out there that, again, can, can say, you know, hey, we abide in the doctrine of Christ. I can tell you that I don't know any churches that wouldn't believe they abide in the doctrine of Christ. And yet, I think we would all agree how many false doctrines and teachings there are across all the lands of all the churches, yet all of them think they abide in the doctrine of Christ. So, if you don't understand what that is, I think I made a video somewhere, and um, I would encourage you to watch it, about abiding in the doctrine of Christ. And it explains very clearly, and you can judge for yourself when you read it, you know. See if you find what's being said is taught by uh, the apostles and taught by Christ. Anyway... I don't know what you're looking for, and that's the whole point of making this video, and I'm, I'm kind of done with it now. And I just, with coffee and just kind of a slower pace, um, I just wanted to invite you to give this a good, strong ponder. And know that we are always looking for brethren and sistren to enjoy the benefit of face-to-face -face meeting and having relationship. Relationships. We know one another. We know each other by name. And we, we realize that we glorify God when we come together. We don't forsake assembling ourselves together. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Till next time.